Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello viewers, <laughs> welcome to my Doctor Who themed YouTube channel, Who Ventures. And I'm going to review the brilliant episode, which is amazing, written by new writer Jamie. G um, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, Jamie Matheson, maybe. But Jamie, you're a brilliant writer. You're the most amazing writer ever, and you're a brilliant asset to Doctor Who. And I want you to come back and write a ton more episodes. And also, I agree with some other people have said this, and I agree that you should be a show should be the next showrunner for Doctor Who because you've written an amazing episode. And I can't wait to see your next episode. So let's dive straight into the my notes and then I'll pick up on some points from Gallifrey base afterwards. Just something. Right, now we start with the mummy, the scary mummy, and it's coming to get the old lady and I think the counter looks really stylish and I think it's really effective. It's just amazing. It's really effective like because it was, it was, it stopped being more like passive viewing and it was like, ah, really tense and active viewing. It was, ah. And then the old lady uh, has been pointed out, she was dining on pea soup and that has been pointed out by a fellow recipe fucker <laughs> that she was dining on pea soup. So that was an interesting point. And then there's a whole big, um, thread on Gallifrey Base about things in space and this is Orient Express in space and as I said pigs in space I can't see that very well can I guys but my my was it pigs in space because my brother's called Dr. Bob's and I think that was possibly to do with pigs in space because the Ralph the dog was sort of a doctor in that sort of scenario. I don't know. And uh, the child lands in the bag to car and I thought that was really sweet bit where, where Clara says wonderful and then the doctor says no it's not well thanks for lying. I thought it was really sweet. Well I'm really happy this week because they talked and Clara got a different viewpoint from Maisie and the doctor actually opened up about his life and what he does and the bad choices he has to make. He had to open up and they had a proper chat. So I'm really happy this week. So out they come from the TARDIS looking very sexy. So the doctor in his like tuxedo but with the cravat, amazingly sexy. And Clara's beautiful dress, very saucy. But her bob, her bob and that little beauty mark she put on the red lipstick, her she re Jenna really suits that bob haircut. I thought she looked gorgeous. And we have foxes, the singer singing. And I really liked the arrangement of Queens Don't Stop Me Now. And there's been a lot of people saying, oh, either oh, they should have got somebody a bit more high profile, which wasn't actually the point because it wasn't, the show wasn't about the singer. But I thought Foxes did a great job. I don't particularly follow her music or anything, but um, she, she did. I thought she did an, a lovely job, and she kept her fans happy. And we got some nice singing in Doctor Who, so yay! And then there's a bit a uh, thread about the Doctor. He keeps rubbing his arm, the partic particular arm, and. Uh, I only noticed it when somebody pointed it out, but when that guy with the sort of steampunky attachments brushes past him, he rubs his arm like. Now, it might be because he doesn't like the contact because somebody said eh, this doctor's a bit autistic. But other people are saying there is some story reason that he rubs his arm, but I've only, I haven't actually noticed it while watching it. Well, just watching the episode, so I don't know if that is going to be a story point. I'm not sure, but I suppose if somebody does barge past you, you would rub your arm, so that's confusing. 
But and then I really like the bit and Clara would say, you, there's that smile, you're smiling, but you're sad, it's two emotions at once, it's like malfunctioning. <laughs> I love Capaldi's hand gestures, he's awesome at hand gestures, I love them. And I thought that was really sweet, because that's, because there was a thread that, as is the Doctor a bit Sheldon keep it Now, first of all, never say that, never say it like that. If you want to ask, is the doctor a bit autistic, or a better way of saying it would be, does the doctor portray um, behaviours or little things that autistic people can relate to? In which case the answer is yes, but never phrase it as, is the doctor a bit of Sheldon Cooper? Because Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory is a worst example of an autistic character, because it's just so annoying and the best example or better example of autism in a, like a comedy is community it, which doesn't have a laugh track which absolutely totally benefits from not having a laugh track so definitely go for community if you're interested about autistic characters in television it's the best show so so this relates to it is like I caught like he couldn't figure out because he's like smiling and sad and he's like totally confused. So that that I can relate to that. Then the Alvin and Atta looking out the window. Oh yeah, like the thumbs. That note means I like the little thumbs on the door panels. I really like that design and people are saying it's a bit like Facebook with the light. And then I liked it when the doctor said, I remember when this was all planets. That was really sweet. I was like, on now. <laughs> I love Cavaldi's expressions. Then Clara says, I hated you for weeks. And then the, is, I can't remember all the amazing lines. And then the doctor says something about, oh, no. And then he talks about the the planets that shrubs and people saying oh at the end of this episode Clara does total 180 but she doesn't I hate that I hate when say oh that person did a total 180 well if you actually paid attention to the episode first of all she's saying I don't hate you and she's hugging the doctor then she has the chat with Maisie and sort of there wouldn't be fairy tales about this person and so you can see all, all it collecting up to yeah I still want to travel with the doctor so you can totally see that happening throughout the episode so it's not a 180 at all and I really like that there's a clear gap in between each episode and so we can put new stories in and we can have like uh, storybooks and comics and things to fill in the gaps I love that So I thought that was a really sweet conversation with the Doctor and Clara. And it's like, so, uh, for our last two hours, like, oh. But I'm glad they had a good chat. And she's asking, would the Doctor just come around for dinner? The, that would be weird. Well, that would be sweet. I'd have the Doctor around for dinner. That would be sweet. And I'd probably go in the TARDIS, obviously. And then the, the scene where the doctor is sort of talking to himself, going through, trying to figure out, and he does the Tom Baker impression. Pete Capaldi does Tom Baker impression, that was brilliant. And again, his hand gestures, and I liked how he looked without the jacket on, that was really sexy. <laughs> and then we they saw Clara on the phone to Danny, and she was wearing some beautiful silk pyjamas, and she looked really adorable. And I don't know, is the egotist, they sort of reminded me of, like, me. Like, because I used to have short hair and stuff. Because she's never called, and I, I used to wear some pyjamas, kind of, not on purpose, though. I accidentally uh, gained some pyjamas that was sort of silky, but I didn't like them. But she looked really adorable in silk pyjamas. 
I thought they were really cute because I could like, feel the silk in my mind of the texture and not that it was naughty or anything but she looked really cute anyway and then daddy says enjoy your space train this is really it's kind of weird because daddy's just lying there on the sofa oh yeah you're in space are you yeah enjoy lying and enjoy, enjoy your space train being in space it's like this is it's weird that he's so relaxed about it, he's just not bothered. I still have suspicions about Danny. A lot, a lot of people have suspicions about Danny. I'm still not sure about him. It just seems it just seems weird that he just lie there saying, Oh yeah, you're in space. But I guess that's the Hooney base that they expect it's expected to have weird things. So I guess that's why people that's why I only said to Clary, you're a you're a space woman and it didn't see you actually that bothered that somebody can come and travel in time from space and land so I guess in the universe aliens obviously are common and so and it's common that it's possible to go to the future and be someone that comes from space that's what Danny seems to be saying it doesn't seem to be phased which is unusual and I thought that that was really sweet because it's like, shall I wait, Clara? I, was, I bet not. I thought it was really considerate there. But Clara gets up anyway in the, in the dressing down in the silk pyjamas to see if the doctor's out, he's buggered off. And then she goes and puts her dress back on so she, go in and, so she can go and explore. I thought that was really cute. Then Frank Skinner, the whole thing about Frank Skinner being in this episode I, I have to admit I was sort of nervous because about when it's a, a really well recognised celebrity I sort of do get a bit nervous I, I was sorry Keely Horse but I was kind of disappointed with Keely Horse because I thought her character she, well I didn't think she got very good lines because her character was sort of generic dominatrix for the most of it the clown and she did all, and she did all that, of, oh, it's just tease that. So I wasn't impressed with Kaylee Hawes in this series, because, well, she didn't really get much to do. But Frank Skinner, I thought he was amazing. He did a really, he was really subtle and really sort of quiet in the role, but it was amazing because his reaction face, he's, he's really good on reaction faces because it wasn't just delivering lines, like he's really good, really lovely subtle performance and I love the character of Perkins and I want him back and that bit was when at the end of the episode and the doctor asks him to travel and the, and he says no and that, and then he does that like so. It's like that is like Frank saying no to the TARDIS and it makes me so sad. It's like, oh. So I really enjoyed that. I think, oh, he did an amazing job. I love the um, Doctor Who magazine interview with Frank. It's really sweet, especially when he goes on about, I'm canon, I'm canon. <laughs> That's so cute. And I love when the doctor says, I'm the doctor, news pocket. And he does a really cute smile. It's such a sweet smile. And then Clara bumps into Maisie and they try and open the door with the shoe. And then when the doctor's going to investigate, he finds somebody to chat to and he goes, Is that really excited? And then the most amazing insertion that ever is the jelly babies and in the cigarillo case, it's like jelly bean. It's so sexy. It's hot. That's amazing. That was one of my favourite bits. Oh, it was so sexy. And then the I thought it was really effective when we saw the kitchen staff. The mummy was getting one of the kitchen staff, and the counter was overlaid on Peter, on the doctor talking to that pass to, to I don't know if that was the captain at that point the doctor talking to that passenger 
and you could see the counter overlaid but they could they didn't know what was going on but we could see the counter overlaid onto their scene as well so I thought that was really effective and then there's a like about uh, uh, Mrs Pet how was Maisie's gran and stuff and then class diff then difficult people can make you feel all sorts of things I thought that was an interesting way I thought it was really sweet as sort of Clara came to a realisation of that she still wants to be with the Doctor and travel in the TARDIS then we got the Doctor psychic paper you know mystery shopping I thought that was really funny and said uh, and said stuff about like the the feud and the matches and stuff of what I was playing. And then the doctor spies the captain's bravery certificate. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if this is on purpose, but somebody's done a thread with a close up of the certificate. And we've, between us, we've kind of spotted a few spelling mistakes. And we've spotted that the signature, well, the boss of Gallifrey Base has spotted that the signatures are written in the same handwriting and they're meant to be two different people who've signed it. So unfortunately we spotted a few errors on the bravery certificate. So I don't know if that's a story reason but somebody has spotted that it seems to say Seb. Now Seb is Missy's receptionist who's played by Chris Addison and it might be a story reason but I'm not sure so sorry for spotting spelling mistakes but we look at every tiny little thing that's so much fun right and then was that of course they so sweet and the doctor uh, Perkins comes up with the maps and things like and says and then the doctor goes <laughs> oh, so cute. They're so cute. She... <sighs> I'm mixing up all my words. They're so sweet and cute together. Then Clara and Maisie's chat is sweet. Then I love her. Um, Perkins, can we get a new expert? <laughs> that was really funny. And I, I liked when Peter then the doctor said, um, "There's been another mummy murder." That was like that Scottish detective again when he said in deep breath a four hours funny and then I like the shot of seeing the doctor through Gussie's sort of webcam view thing uh, he liked I just I just really liked they looked fuzzy and cool and then, uh, that was funny when he said hey, well I don't know the stupid sonic screwdriver is working well I guess this but it's gotta be a guess it's a stupid sonic screwdriver isn't working <laughs> that was really funny that was a really funny little tantrum and then the sarcophagus full of bubble wrap. People are saying that's a nod to classic who when the monsters were actually made of bubble wrap. <laughs> that was funny. And then the doctor gets called away by the captain because they think it's Mr. Shopping. Says, I'll have to mark you down for this. <laughs> that was funny. Then I loved when it sort of went into Agatha Christie deductions that, oh, I know what's going on. I really like that bit. And then all the props and docks. So Russ got all the props and docks to be on this train to work out what the mummy is. And then there's a Red Dwarf reference about hard light holograms. So somebody's saying that Missy must be Kachansky, like evil Kachansky. And Dave List has got to find her again. So that was funny. And then Gus, I liked um, the voice of Gus. Um, John Sessions. I thought the voice fitted really well. And then Perkins looks like uh, looks like they thought of that. I thought that was funny. Lad. And then the doctor and then the mummy's coming after that guy and that's it. Oh dear, hard cheese. Tell me what you can see. I thought that was sort of an interesting thing that the doctor said because he's sort of doing well, here's a quick sympathetic thing. Now we need to work it out. So I thought that was interesting. Then Clara found the paperwork on the phone. But then the, the, the chef guys, they get ejected out of the train. And that's really creepy. I thought that looked really good. And was really creepy. I liked how um, Perkins' little iPad. I thought that was really good. 
and Fat Skinner does really good iPad acting too. And then there's a, the captain and the photo of the mummy can sense psychological issues and the captain talked about his PTSD which is what the actually the doctor is going through. So I thought it's interesting how it relates to the doctor. And then oh the mummy with me putting his hand through the doctor's face. I was like, ah, that was an amazing special effect. It was like, ugh, ugh. And it was really good. And then you say, what takes 66 seconds to charge up or change state? I thought that was interesting. I had to try and think of what it could be. And this is ancient tech moving energy out of these. And then, because uh, sort of, Perkins helped come out of that and then the doctor says oh I, I'm going to jump the gun a bit there with the genius remark that was really funny Um, because Maisie had a, a bad day a breakdown and her grand keeled over the doctor's trying to get Clara to tell her I could save who gets Clara to lie and some people are saying it, it doesn't um, save Maisie until Clara tells him to but I'm not sure. I think a part of him is he's got a plan and a bit Clara like pushes him to do the plan, maybe. And then there's a monocle on the door signs as well. So I thought that was cute. And then we've got Gus News Tardis and said, Yeah, you knew it's danger. I didn't know, but certainly out. And then Clara says, You made me your accomplice. And I guess that's right, because there's because Clara was lying and got Maisie to be in danger, but he also saved her. So Clara's is accomplished for saving loads of people too. And then the, the, the popular line is, are you my mummy? <laughs> that was a really good reference to Christopher Eccleston's era. And that um, Maisie's grand poisoned a uh, pony and a father. And then we've got the mummy's a soldier. And the doctor's talking about um, what the soldiers did, what the people did to him when he was a soldier. And so the doctor's sort of talking about himself. And then I loved the line um, that, right about, because he said the soldiers believed. And um, Perkins said, oh, he's not the only one. I thought that was really well delivered line. It was really funny. And then the ancient soldier is driven by malfunctioning tech. And then he was using the teleporter to get everybody out of the train. And then, then we sort of see the beach scene and it is beautiful. It, for it sort of reminded me, so it made me think it was like sort of 40s, 50s, but like Famous Five, because with Clara under the blankets on the beach, that's what it looks like. It just looked beautiful, it was amazing. And then he dropped him off on the nearest civilised planet. And then he does that bit like, uh, no, a lot, a lot more die. <laughs> and I like, I like that because it's like a grumpy, uh, well, what Clara might think, might think to criticise him with. I thought that was a uh, good. And then I like that the dot opened up and says sometimes the only choices are bad ones but you still have to choose. So I thought I really like that the doctors have opened up and made sort of Clara understands him more now. And and when Perkins was tinkering underneath the TARDIS, I thought it should stay on a lot of people are saying you should stay on the TARDIS as the Andy man. I thought I think that would be really sweet. And then we got the Clarice and the dots talking about is it an addiction to stay going off in the TARDIS having adventures? And somebody has pointed out that's a bit like when some classic fans sort of quit Doctor Who, but then they can't help watching it because they're addicted. And then um, somebody said Clara was looking at the doctor when she says I love you to Danny but she's not because she's on the balcony and she's looking across so she's not looking directly at the doctor when she says I love you to Danny. Danny's remarkably relaxed again but probably because he thinks she's coming straight home now 
but she's not. I just don't, it just, I just find it weird that Danny's so relaxed. It just seems suspicious. And then I love that the, the doctor's smile and said, seriously, it's like, oh, he's so adorable. And then, and, and then they're going to uh, go off to the planet of the shrubs and that's given me a sort of an idea for a drawing. And uh, I, I think it's an excellent episode and Jane did an excellent job and he's, he, he's written the next episode and I can't wait for that. That looks really exciting. So my overall, what I'm going to basically give it a 10 out of 10. That's my overall finish for this episode's notes. I've done a smiley face with very stemmy wavy hands because it was amazing. So I, I really really enjoyed this episode. And that like doing my, uh, yeah, let's do a gallery. Let's see if I have got anything else to say about this. So basically, I think I've covered everything actually. So there's a lot of talk about Clara's outfits, um, talk about foxes. It's, I thought it was just amazing and loads of us loved it and it was brilliant and I really loved it and yeah and I'm really chatty at the moment so I kind of think I might do some more videos but I thinking of how to get my webcam position so I can show you how I draw the 12th doctor. So I'll, I'll load this video onto YouTube and while that's loading up and that, I'll think about how I can show you how I do my drawing and stuff. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Yay! And thank you, Jamie, for a brilliant episode. Yay.